So um, if we look back to last Christmas and the top selling item on Amazon, the first top two selling items were the, their very own smart speaker, the Amazon Echo, and a smaller version, the Echo Dot. And um, estimates by analysts say that up to 20% of American homes right now already own a smart speaker. And they expect this number to quadruple in the next two years. Now, knowing um, all the deficiencies that these things currently have, it's quite fascinating, you know, the market penetration and the usage that they've managed to see so far. And um, um, this is happening in large part because of their promise and what virtual personal assistants could be as the final frontier uh, of human-computer interaction. So if we take a glimpse into the future of what we could expect from these things one day, if, say, I'm organizing a wedding or a very big party, today I need to go identify the venues, find reviews for them, read them all, learn about them, um, you know, figure out what's important, and then make a decision. And just to read all of those things, I need you know, hours, if not days. An artificially intelligent virtual assistant could read these reviews in a blink of an eye. Now, it knows my preferences. It knows what kind of music I like, how much I'm willing to pay, what areas I like, who I'd like to invite. It can confirm, perhaps, with me whether the venue is okay when it picks one, and then proceed to book the venue, invite everyone, and handle the whole thing for me. Now, this is very futuristic, but the first step to getting there is connecting these virtual assistants to third-party services and their content. And even though these assistants are built by tech giants, it's not very likely that they will go in and implement all the services that I need to actually support this whole booking scenario. So if you think back to the iPhone, it became the next platform after the web only when Apple introduced the App Store and turned these phones that we already had in our pockets into these ubiquitous devices that we now use to consume information, entertainment, and communication. So where are we with an App Store for virtual personal assistants? If you look at the top four Alexa skills, the, the, the four most popular ones, you'll see that they allow you to hear recipes, and ask the assistant to bark, meow, and fart. Now, this doesn't really seem like the next generation of human-computer interaction. And um, when we think about why these are the best things we see and the most popular ones, we, you might be inclined to think that we don't have the tools to build these things. And yet, all the big tech companies and many other independent um, providers are building these tools. There are many of them, and they're very good, actually. You can build a chatbot or an Alexa skill in a matter of hours, if not in less than an hour for simple scenarios. So there are 15,000 Alexa skills and tens of thousands of Facebook Messenger bots, but none of them, well, there are a few good ones, but the majority are not used at all. And um, I think to explain this phenomena, we have to go back to the first technical platform that um, in, in kind of like a look at the web. When we built uh, websites initially, we built many of them. We built them for decades. We figured out how to solve the technical challenges, and then the whole science of user experience design evolved on top of that. And only when we understood it well enough did we know enough about the whole process to actually create tools like WordPress or Wix.com, where you can you know, uh, drag and drop a website in a matter of minutes and create a pretty decent website. Um, so what's happening in virtual assistants is that people are trying to take a shortcut. And we are building tools without actually seeing an end product. And we think that that's not the way to go. So the first problem that we have is we need to solve the technical challenges. And with personal assistants, there are many. The first one is speech recognition, how you transfer our voice into text. The second one is transferring the text into actionable user intents. And this requires a lot of machine learning, and it's still a very open problem. The third one could be the most challenging one, and that is if you actually want to have a conversation, so not single turn question answering, you need to be able to uh, interact with databases, third party API calls, decide what the user wants to do, perform the action for them, and continue the conversation, follow up. And typically in academia, we use reinforcement learning for these problems. And that's not something that you can just give to an average developer and tell them, train a conversational agent using reinforcement learning. We're not there yet. We're not going to be there for a very long time. 
So if you just look at the first part, their natural language understanding, and you want to build the simplest of Alexa skills today, say you want to set an alarm. And um, right now you'd have to write down hundreds of rephrasings to actually then train a natural language understanding component that would implement this. And in doing this, we're actually pushing the hard part of the problem back to the developer. We're forcing them to curate the machine learning data set for us. Now, machine learning has been democratized with tools like TensorFlow, PyTorch, and it's very easy to train a model. But the hard part is getting the data set. And by making developers do this, we're actually just avoiding the hard part of the problem. And um, this is a problem that a lot of these uh, frameworks have. They're asked the users to provide data without actually telling them how to do it. The developers are not trained, and that's the first big blocker. Now, for those more technologically sophisticated companies with kind of like more developers and more experience in this, maybe they get over the first hurdle and do language understanding decently well. What happens then is then when they want to support a slightly more complicated conversational scenario, what happens is that they're just out of, out of depth. They um, see this is an example by one of our developers uh, to build a taxi ordering app. And the moment you start building these dialogue trees, you get these things that are hard to read, hard to create, hard to maintain, hard to update, and you're stuck. It doesn't scale and you give up. And this is why there are so many uh, abandoned, orphaned Alexa skills and chatbots. Um, so what we are doing at Poly AI is we're building a platform for conversational AI that's based on everything that we've done in um, our academic careers. So we use deep learning for natural language understanding and gender generation. And we collect the data ourselves using our proprietary data collection platform. Uh, we've developed this data collection over many years, and it collects data at a fraction of the cost paid by pretty much any of our competitors. For the uh, control of the data flow itself, we have other proprietary technology that lets you use Lego-like components to actually build the right kind of user experience and control the use cases that you want to have control over. Our platform is domain agnostic. It uses the same model whether you're uh, booking flights, restaurants, whether you're ordering taxis, or playing music. It's multilingual inherently, and the models support many languages at once with very little training data for languages other than English. And of course, they connect to all the platforms. So why can we do this? Um, we have 10 people right now, and six of us did machine learning PhDs or postdocs at Cambridge. We spent between five to 10 years working on dialogue, and this is really, for many of us, our mission in life and what we've been really focused on. Um, between us, we published more than 100 research papers, have more than 2,000 citations, and uh, not only did we work on this in academia, but we also have experience from almost all the big tech giants working on this, including um, Apple, Google, Microsoft, and Facebook AI. So if you're interested in building conversational capability and you've tried and failed with these developer tools, please come talk to us in the, in the startup village. And if you're interested in working on this, also come talk to us. Thanks.